Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to inertia. We're going to be looking at Newton's first law, how it relates to inertia, and we're also going to be look looking at some examples of application of inertia in our daily lives. Let's dive right into it. First, let's look at Newton's first law. Now, Newton's first law states that an object will continue its state of rest or motion in constant or uniform velocity unless acted upon by an external force. So when an object is either moving or not moving, okay, for example, if I have this mouse on my hand, it's not moving and it will continue to stay at rest. It will not move unless I move it unless I apply an external force that is what an external force means and if an object is already moving so let's say we roll a marble when you roll a marble the marble will continue moving and moving and moving it will not stop unless extent acted upon by an external force meaning either you stop the marble from moving of course the marble will have friction with the surface that it's moving along so eventually the friction will cause the marble to stop moving that is the external force so this is what external force means so Newton's first law states that an object will continue its state of motion whether it's at rest or moving at constant velocity unless acted upon by an external force and this Newton's first law is what will explain inertia so inertia is essentially the same thing inertia is the tendency of an object to continue its state of rest or motion in constant or uniform velocity unless acted upon by an external force. Now there's two ways to put it. It means exactly the same thing. One is the tendency to continue its state of motion. The other one is the resistance to change the state of motion. Meaning that if it is at rest, it will not want to start moving. If it is already moving at constant velocity, this is important, no acceleration, constant velocity. If it's already moving at constant velocity, then it will not want to stop moving. That is what inertia means. So I've broken it into two. Of course, when you define inertia, you have to mention both, but I've broken it into two. So we look at it differently. Now, the first one, we look at the resistance of an object to move. That means it wants to maintain its state of rest. Okay, there are several examples here. So let's look at the examples. Removing of tablecloth with plate on it. So you've prob probably seen this magic trick, right? So when they, you've seen uh, some professionals, they have a dining table, and then they've set a tablecloth, and on the tablecloth, they have utensils. They have plates, they have uh, uh, cups, uh, whatever utensils on the table. And what you see them do is, they pull the tablecloth very quickly, and then the tablecloth comes off, but all the utensils are still on the table. All the plates and the utensils are still on the table. So this is an example of inertia where the object, object has a resistance to change its state of rest. The table, is not, the table and the plates are not moving. The table, the plates, the utensils, everything is not moving. So they want to stay that way. So when we pull the tablecloth, they resist motion. So they stay exactly where they are when we pull quickly. Okay? When we pull slowly, the plate will also move. The plate, the cup and everything will also move. Now this is, this to understand this and to explain this, you have to go into uh, friction, all right? Friction and frictional force and acceleration, uh, which we will not cover here. So all you have to understand is, to explain inertia in this case, the plate does not want to move because it is initially at rest. It wants to stay at rest. So it wants to continue to stay at rest. So when you pull the tablecloth, it doesn't move. It is still where it is. The second example is jerking the cardboard with a coin on it. So let's say this is a cup. We've placed a cardboard on the cup and a coin on the cardboard. If we very quickly pull the cardboard, what you will realize is the coin doesn't move with the cardboard. The coin stays exactly where it was in the beginning. And now that the, the cardboard has moved, the coin will fall into the cup. So this is another example of inertia where the object stays at rest. It does not want to move. It resists its change in state of rest. It wants to continue to be at rest. So 
even though the cardboard moves, it stays at rest and then it falls into the cup. Another example is when you've, you've, you might have felt this when you've uh, used public transports, especially buses and trains. So resistance to move here. So when you just get onto the bus or get onto the train and the train just starts to move, okay, you would have felt that your body is being thrown backwards a little bit. You're being moved backwards. So this is another example where your body does not want to start moving. The train has already started to move. The train or bus has already started to move, but your body wants to stay where it is. The resistance of an object to change its state of motion or the object will continue its state of rest. So here your body is the object. It wants to continue its state of rest. Therefore, even though the bus or train moves forward, you are still at the same position. So it is as if you are being pushed backwards. Now the other way to look at inertia, you must look at both of course, you must mention both. So the other way to look at it is when an object is already moving at constant velocity, uniform velocity, means no acceleration, right? There is no acceleration, there is no resultant force. We'll cover that another time. So when the object is moving at constant velocity, it will want to maintain moving at constant velocity. It will not want to stop or speed up for that matter. So here, let's look at the first example. So this one, when the body, when the train or the bus is already moving, you're already moving from one station to the next, and then it arrives at the stop or the station. When it arrives at the stop or the station, remember your body is moving along with the train or bus. So when your body is moving along with the train or bus and the bus or train comes to a stop, by the principle of inertia, your body will resist the change in its state of motion, in its state of constant velocity. So what will happen is, even though the vehicle has stopped, your body will continue moving forward. And that is why you feel like you're being thrown forward. And this is the same case when there is an accident. So when there is an accident, when there's a car accident, this is the function of the seat belt. Because without the seat belt, our body will not want to stop moving. It will continue its state of motion. The body will continue moving forward. So without the seat belt, the body will get thrown out of the car. So this is the importance of the seat belt. The seat belt is actually to reduce the effect of, or rather to stop the effect of, inertia when there is an accident to prevent us from being thrown out of the vehicle for safety. Another everyday example we can look at is getting sauce out of the bottle. So when we want to get sauce out of the bottle, what we do is shake it, right? So when we shake it, after you shake it, the bottle stops moving. When you pull back and push forward, the bottle and the sauce both are moving forward. However, when you stop the bottle from moving, the sauce will want to continue its state of motion. So the sauce will come out of the bottle because it continues moving forward. The same case with an umbrella. So when you want to dry an umbrella, you spin it and you stop it. So when you spin and stop, the droplets on the umbrella will continue to move although the umbrella has stopped because it will want to continue its state of motion and that is how you dry the umbrella by spinning it and stopping it. So this is also an application of inertia. Now we're going to look at the in relationship of inertia to mass. Now inertia is directly proportional to mass which means that when the mass is increased, when the mass is higher, the inertia is going to be greater. The resistance to change its state of motion is going to be greater. That means when it is at rest, it is going to be harder for, a object, for an object with a larger mass to start moving. Or if the, mass, the object with a large mass is already moving, it is going to be harder to make it stop compared to an object that has lower mass. Let's look at the example. If a car and a lorry are moving at the same speed, both are moving at the same speed. Now, assuming, of course, the lorry has a much larger mass than the car and both come to a stop at a junction, the lorry will have a higher inertia because the lorry has, has a higher mass. And so, it is going to be harder for the lorry to stop compared to the car. Same thing when both start to move, when the traffic light turns green and both start to move the car will be easier to move because it has a lower inertia, because it has a lower mass. 
Therefore, it is going to be easier to move compared to the lorry that has a higher mass and therefore a higher inertia. Meaning that it is going to be harder to change its state of motion, its state of rest here. It's going to be harder to move. Same thing we can apply when we are moving a heavy box and a light box. Let's say you have to push a heavy box or push a light box. It's going to be easier to get the light box to move because of inertia again, principle of inertia. The larger, the heavier box will have a higher mass and therefore it will have a higher inertia. It will have a higher resistance to start moving from its state of rest. So this is a simple experiment we can do to investigate the relationship between mass and inertia. We hang two pails, these are pails or buckets that are hung by a string. The string has to be the same length. Now essentially we are going to treat the pails as pendulums. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull the pail up. We're going to bring the pail up to a higher position. The, both the pails at the same angle and let them go. So both the pails are going to be swinging like a pendulum. Now, if there is no external force, they will continue swinging forever. They will just continue to swing. However, there is an external force here, which is air resistance. So because of air resistance, eventually both are going to come to a stop. However, because the pail, one pail is filled with sand and the other is empty. Of course, the pail that is filled with sand has a higher mass and therefore it is going to have a higher inertia. It is going to have a higher resistance to stop its constant velocity. It's going to have a resistance to stop its state of motion. So it is going to swing longer than the pail that is empty. This will continue swinging for a longer time compared to the empty pail because the empty pail has a lower mass and therefore has lower inertia. That's it for this video guys. Please subscribe if you haven't and hit the like button if you learned something and I will see you at the next video.